Yeah, I, I think I've cried at every film I've seen in the past uh, month. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, we went to see, yeah. we saw uh, we saw senior yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s portrait of his father, which was definitely uh, like a unique experience yeah. that I suppose I've heard some people have had in watching our film, mm -hmm. but uh, it was definitely a case of like stifling, uncontrollable sobbing toward And he was like sat end. right in front and of us. And he was directly yeah. in front of us, uh, which was uh, <laughs> particularly intense. Yeah. I think like the very first starting point, I'd been flipping through some old family photographs and uh, was just struck by how young my dad looked in, in the, um, the photos of the trips that I'd taken with him as a kid. And I think it inspired what at first was quite a fictional, like more traditionally structured piece. And over the course of writing it, which, which took a while, it became something a bit more personal, something I brought myself into. It kind of became about sifting through memories, which I was doing by virtue of writing this film. And so the processes started to weave together. Maybe it was naive of me, but I didn't see it as like, oh, it's a dad role, you gotta be careful of that. It was, it was really, I read the script and my agents were really excited about it as they sent it to me. And I was like, okay, let's read this. And then like immediately fell in love with it. So I, I, don't, I don't know if I really consider the kind of genre of character or something like that. It's, it's really to do with the filmmaker and the script and what Charlie wrote. and. I saw Charlie's shorts, I was like, it's a no-brainer, I'll deal with the kind of typecasting of being a dad at a later date. <laughs> it, it was actually about just creating a re really special bond with one person in Frankie. We just spent two weeks getting to know each other. We developed a kind of rehearsal, non-rehearsal process, which was essentially just hanging out and playing pool and swimming in the sea and, and things like that. So it was, I, I, I had a great time with Frankie the sadness of it does sometimes hit, which I think for me, it depends on the day. Yeah. Like there are always moments that I look forward to watching. At this point, I even in the edit, like would catch me by surprise, you know, just seeing something and, and suddenly really feeling it. But I think that is also the instinct that you trust, certainly when you are still in the process of making it because you're so close to it. So when you feel something on the screen, I think that's like an indication that you, you go forward and you, you chase chase that feeling because you do become a little bit immune to what you've captured over time. And watching it now, yeah, I think it just depends on the uh, the state that I'm in if I'm not just riddled by the anxiety of like watching yeah. the film. Watching it at Cannes kind of caught me because I saw like a screening of it the first time like in a room by myself and I was like, oh, the film is great. I'm really proud of it. But then watching it in a full room beside Frankie and Charlie and Cannes, I was like, it's really not cool to cry at your own movie. Don't cry, don't cry. But it, yeah, there was a lady in front of us. She was sitting with her partner, and it was like towards the end of the film, and I just saw her shoulder go, turned into her partner. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like full shoulder heaving. So it's really satisfying. It's lovely. I also yeah. just can't help but feel very apologetic <laughs> yeah. um, for for reducing people to that state. So at the same time, yeah, it's 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 a compliment for sure. But I'm also sorry for it. Mm -hmm.